Okay, very good evening everybody and welcome to our service of Compline. Welcome to those here in the building, welcome to those joining us at home. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist, steadfast in the faith. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us all our sins, and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Praise ye the Lord. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that with thy wonted favour thou wouldst be our God and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasies, tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 91, to be found on page 5. I will say this antiphonally. Whoso dwelleth under the defence of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, Thou art my hope and my stronghold, my God in him will I trust. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunter and from the noisome pestilence. He shall defend thee under his wings, and thou shalt be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness and truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for any terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the sickness that destroyeth in the noonday. A thousand shall fall beside thee, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Yea, with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the ungodly. For thou, Lord, art my hope, Thou, thou hast set thine house of defence very high. There shall no evil happen unto thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, that thou hurt not thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt go upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the, and the dragon shalt thou tread under thy feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Yea, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him and bring him to honour. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This week is marked as the week of Christian unity and I wonder if I could read this verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 11. My brothers and sisters, writes Paul, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. And I just wonder what ripples went round the circle of the listeners. Some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are, that there are quarrels among you. And were some from Chloe's household actually there? And were people looking a bit sideways thinking, hey you from Chloe's household, how come that you let Paul know that not everything was going well? Or if they weren't there, how dare someone from Chloe's household let Paul know that things weren't all going well. Clearly there is a bit of disunity and someone or some from Chloe's household felt enough is enough, we need to tell Paul. He will want to know this. And Paul, always being straight speaking, sends it in the letter, it's read out. What would people be thinking? Sometimes when things are going a little bit wrong, it's not easy to know to whom we should turn. And sometimes it's right to say something, and sometimes it's right just to hold it for the moment. What Paul does with this knowledge is to turn it into a good teaching moment, as he is always likely to do. Because basically the, the Corinthians had got a little bit tribal. And so he talks that through, and I'm conscious we've, we've looked at this uh, relatively recent, but just one or two more points on this, or some of us have looked on this. He talked this through and he pointed out that this wasn't about following particular individuals but it's all about setting our focus on Christ and also setting our focus on our unity together. When we travel together in the same direction, seeking to know Christ better, seeking to receive his love, seeking to see how that love can be shown in our lives, we are less likely to fall out with one another. Many years ago, many, many years ago, I went for a walk in the Lake District and I was improperly shod because I didn't have any walking boots. So I borrowed some from a friend and they didn't fit and I'm scared of heights and I just was in lots of discomfort all the way through. So I fell behind. And then someone called Mark came back and he walked with me because we were all going in the same direction and he didn't want me to be left behind so much that it might be tricky for me or tricky for the group. In this week of Christian unity, as we remember our brothers and sisters in other churches, also let us re remember one another. And if we're conscious that if any of us are maybe not quite equipped, wearing the wrong shoes, needing a bit of help, getting a bit lost, scared of heights, whatever it may be, then let's take time to spend alongside them so we are all going in the same direction. If St Paul had had to write his letter to that Lake District walking group afterwards, and if nobody had stayed behind to help the poor straggler, he might have brought that to mind as well. If ever there are disagreements between us, let's prayerfully wonder, well, what do we do with this? How can we talk this through? How can we pray it through? If ever, if, ever we are, if ever we hear disagreements and need to respond, let's remember Paul's example, who used this as an example to teach about the centrality of Christ and the shared direction. And let's be grateful for those Corinthians who, as far as we know, no one stormed out of the circle on hearing these words. They stayed humbly, patiently, ready to hear more and what it might mean for them all. 
those joining us at home, I'm very conscious sometimes it feels a little bit different. May we assure you that you are very much united with all those physically present here. One Church, and of course the great One Church worldwide and through history, united in Christ, proclaiming him from generation to generation. Let us pray. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place, and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace, and may thy blessing be upon us evermore, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. Abide with us, O Lord. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. As the watchmen look for the morning, so do we look for thee, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless us and preserve us.